Tonight, Grave Diggers Tyler Meninga looks to clinch his first career Stadium Series championship. But can Ryan Anderson keep the pressure on his teammate and lead Son of a Digger back to the top of the point standings? As Monster Mutt's Chris Kohler looks to continue his stellar rookie season by adding another freestyle win. We'll find out next on Monster Jam. Rice Eccles Stadium on the campus of the University of Utah in Salt Lake City is tonight's home for Stadium Championship Series Blue and round 22 of the Monster Jam season. Good evening, I'm Leslie Mears alongside the one and only Adam Entick Knapp. And tonight, we may have a unique opportunity to crown a series champion as Tyler Meninga looks to put an exclamation point on what has been a fantastic season. Yes, and you know, to me tonight, there's two factors, and that's Tyler's performance and will Tyler's truck break. He has been a top three competitor almost every single round if his truck doesn't break. If I'm Tyler tonight, I am nut and bolting that entire truck, focusing on driving, because if the truck's good, He's good. And he did have two DNFs this year, so anything can happen. Another driver who's having a banner year is Monster Mutt's Chris Kohler, and he's coming off his second freestyle win of the season, and he's won every competition at least once this year. Can he keep this continuing here? You know, I absolutely think so. Chris Kohler has just been absolutely lights out this season. For a rookie to come out and win any competition is amazing. For But for Chris, he got a win in every single event this year. And not to mention that, but a stacked field in Stadium Series Blue. I would not be surprised if that's going to be your rookie of the year, no doubt. And we caught up with the Monster Mutt driver about all that more in this UNOH Pit Report. Winning every competition is big. I mean, getting racing was huge for me. One of the bigger ones, I think, because winning racing was a lot tougher. I mean, we have such a fast field, so to get that one, that one was amazing. And I'd like to get an overall, but yeah, in general, getting all three is awesome. That's one of the coolest things about the tour I'm on is it is so tough that it leads to so much growth. I mean, everyone here just pushes you to do better and better, and it's a friendly atmosphere, too, so you can talk to other drivers, and they're willing to give a hand and help you out with tips and tricks to help you grow even more. I've been very happy with myself. So many good competitors on the field. So in order to get one win here and there is just amazing, you know. So biggest thing I need to do is be consistent. I don't necessarily need to win every single event. I just need to get high placements in every single event. So all I do is really bring it together and just collect it all. And he'll be battling against these drivers in the lineup. So who has the opportunity to keep him from getting that overall? I mean, Leslie, I have to go with Ryan Anderson. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Tyler has an opportunity to close out this championship, and Ryan Anderson knows it is do or die tonight. This is last call. I can't wait for the son of a digger driver to heat it up here in Salt Lake. Yeah, and we've got a lot of drivers that have been super consistent, and I think that that's something that everybody is striving for on this tour, so he's really got his work cut out for him. So let's take a look at the series point standings here. So as you mentioned, Tyler on top and Ryan Anderson 43 points behind and just two events to go. And so he's really got to make a move here if he is going to get after that number one spot. Bari Musauer rounds out the top three there. Corey Rummel and then Cynthia Gauthier making a move there and putting herself in fifth. So tonight, drivers will compete in three different competitions, bracket style racing, the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and the freestyle competitions. 12 points to the winner of each event. We'll add those up to determine our overall event champion. So now it's time for track talk, and we've got some different conditions that we're used to seeing here in Monster Jam. So Adam, how are our drivers gonna make that adjustment to compete at the highest level? You know, Leslie, I've raced this stadium many, many times in Supercross, and one of the biggest factors is the altitude and less air. 
for our independent drivers, they're gonna have to physically go in and tune their fuel systems. And for the other drivers, they have an electronic way to do it. So that'll make it a little bit easier, but you still have to make the right adjustments. Another factor with altitude is how fast the water gets sucked up on the track. So you will see the track crew lay down a bunch of water at the beginning of the races. It's gonna be a little slick, and then all of a sudden it's gonna evaporate and dry up really quick. So these drivers are gonna have to adapt. We'll see them adapt in racing, which is the first competition of the night. And here's our matchups. Bad Company versus Avenger, Megalodon versus Axe, El Toro Loco versus Monster Mutt, and Thunder Roarus versus Shaker in round one. Zombie, Stabilizer, Grave Digger, and Son of a Digger all have buys. What's our race to watch? It's got to be El Toro Loco versus Monster Mutt. Cody lost his only race in this series, and I know that is not sitting well with him. He comes from arenas, and he's known for racing, so that Chris and Cody race should be one to watch. Yeah, he's a true racer, and so he definitely wants to excel at that. So now it's time to get to it. Up first, it'll be Jim Kohler in Avenger versus John Gordon in Bad Company. Jim off to Kohler. a nice start here. Yeah, How about Jim it? Kohler off to a great start, taking it a little wide. Oh, but John Gordon clips the pod. And he doesn't get both tires on the ramp. That's a potential five-second penalty. But look at Kohler just roll through it. He almost hits the backflip ramp, sliding out sideways, and he will easily take the win here. Avenger advancing. Let's take a look here at our original Super Glue Glue to the Action replay. John Gordon turns a little bit tight. Can't see that pod. Grabs it. And on top of that, a five-second penalty because both front tires did not hit the ramp. So Morris team scream up next year on the pod. It will be Joe Foley in Axe versus Corey Rummel in Megalodon. Corey Rummel off to a good start. It looks like that gray lane's the one to go and Joe Foley hitting the same pod John Gordon did. We'll see if that gray lane stays consistent here. Corey Rummel swinging a little bit wider, but he hits it too. Slows him up just a little bit, but Rummel advancing in Megalodon. Joe Foley oversteers the truck a little bit, tries to counter, it's too late. Doesn't get both front tires on the pod, just like John, unfortunately, comes up short. So the gray lane so far, two for two and taking out competitors. We'll keep our eyes on that as we'll keep our eyes on Cody Sosie in El Toro Loco out of Lafayette, Louisiana against Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt from Columbus, Michigan. Cody sets the corner nice. It looks like Chris grabs both pods and misses the ramp again, oversteers into the corner. Leslie, this race is over. Cody also hits that gray lane pod right there. However, taking the win does get both front tires across the ramp as we'll take another look at our original super glue glued to the action replay. Here we go. Chris grabs that inside pod. Cody slinging that truck. It's that rear end to come around. Doesn't matter. Gets both front tires on the race ramp and takes the win. And finally, here in round one, it'll be Colt Stevens in Thunder Roarus against Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. And I'm interested to see how the Shaker truck will react to this dirt and this layout that's been getting everybody fit so far. Gray Lane seems to be a great starter. Colt Stevens keeping him honest, though. Here we go. It all comes down to this final turn. Shaker misses it, and that makes the difference there. A clean run for Ryan Disharoon in Shaker to advance. I'll tell you what, this gray lane is hot right now. Shaker grabbing the inside of that pod. Looks like Colt had a great last turn, but just couldn't make up the time. So here are our matchups for round two. I think the surprise, I mean, maybe for some, but not really, is El Toro Loco Cody Socie posting the fastest time of the round. And we'll have some challenging matchups here in our next bracket. So coming up, Ryan Anderson is on a roll, coming off his sixth racing win. Will tonight be number seven? Find out when Son of a Digger hits the track next. Welcome back to Salt Lake City as we kick off the second round of racing. So first up, two-time World Finals freestyle champ Jim Kohler in Avenger against Bari Musauer in Zombie. So it all comes down to that second turn that these guys will make. Bari goes way wide, but so does Jim. 
And Jim clears that problematic area on the gray pod early. Let's see if it's going to make a difference for him. He goes wide again. It all comes down to this final corner. Both of them looking good. Ooh. And a very, very close race here. Let's take a look at our original super glue glued to the action replay. Bari comes out of that corner. Nice. Jim exits the corner just perfectly. It's a photo finish. And how about it? Avenger moves on here to the semifinal round. So here we have our 2019 World Finals high jump champ, Cynthia Gauthier in Lucas Stabilizer versus breakout driver of the year, Corey Rummel in Megalodon. Cynthia in that gray lane. That gray lane has been very fast. Corey with a great first corner though, missing that pod. Yeah, he gets that out of the way early. Maybe an advantage for him. And let's see how Cynthia handles this last one. Giving it a go over the end, but not enough for Corey Rummel here as he will advance. So Megalodon moving on. Next up, the current series points leader, Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger going head to head with Cody Saussier here in El Toro Loco. Reminder, he had that fastest time of round one. You can see a dry spot right there where Tyler Meninga just went. It's breaking down in that corner right now. They're dead even across the middle. Yet it all comes down to the gray lane giving everyone fits. And look, Tyler's been watching his crew chief telling him to swing it a little wider, making the difference for him. Bad, fast grave digger there takes the win and moves on. Let's take another look at it. Tyler Meninga using that rear steer just perfectly sets the truck, misses the pod. Cody, great last corner, sliding a little bit wide with that rear end and can't get it done. So the final round two matchup pits three-time World Finals champion Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger versus Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. Ryan Disharoon off the line well, but Ryan Anderson nice and wide, setting up this first jump perfectly. And so he's got a little bit of a lead here. Let's see how he deals with that dry spot at the end. Coming around the final corner, here we go. A very close race here, but it's gonna be Ryan Disharoon in a shaker moving on to the semifinals. Ryan Disharoon staying nice and tight on that last corner, and Ryan Anderson just ends up pushing a little bit wide, has to oversteer at the finish line, and can't get it done, Leslie. So we move on to the semifinals. Avenger with lane choice over Megalodon, and then Gravedigger with the fastest time of that last round with lane choice over Shaker. So coming up, the fastest four battle for the racing crown and the first 12 points of the night. We'll be right back with more Monster Jam. Welcome back to Salt Lake City, where we have reached the semifinal round in racing. And so our first pair on the line out there, it'll be all team scream. Jim Kohler in Avenger against his longtime technician and now teammate Corey Rummel in Megalodon. Little edge there to Megalodon off the line. Jim was sleeping. Jim, not a great setup on that first corner at all. Grabs the pod. It looks like Corey Rummel has a little bit of a lead. We'll see how he handles this last corner. Corey swinging wide to avoid the turn pod. Low across that finish line. And we'll take a look here at our original super glue glue to the action replay. It looks like Jim Kohler set that last corner up wide, cuts it inside. Corey, what a nice last turn. But, and Corey Rummel gets the victory. So we'll see who will face off against Megalodon. Will it be Ryan Disharoon in Shaker or Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger? Tyler cuts off of that start really tight, gets under that dry spot. He gets it out of the way early. Shaker with the advantage here at the midpoint. But you can really see him flat tracking around the last corner, hitting the turn pod, mm. both of them in trouble. And Gravedigger crosses the line at first. And so able to come back from that and take the victory. I'll tell you what, Ryan Disharoon gave this one away. You can see Tyler grabs that pod. He knew he was behind at the halfway point. He had to make it up and got it done. Goes to show you can never quit out here because you never know what's going to happen. So it'll be Megalodon versus Gravedigger in the finals. So a little bit of a staging duel as we bring our final pair to the line here. So Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger versus Corey Rummel in Megalodon. 
and Corey has not picked up a racing victory this season. I believe he is 0 for 3 in the final round here, so he's trying to change his luck. Tyler Manning, a nice job getting tight on that first turn. Corey Rummel grabs the pod. We're at the halfway point of the final race. Even Stevens, here we go. How are they going to flat track it around and handle this last corner? And it'll be Gravedigger's Tyler Meninga who takes the win there. Tyler Meninga does a great job sticking super tight, but Corey Rumble just pushes the truck a little too hard, slides too much, and can't get the traction. So with the fastest time of the night and the win there, Tyler Meninga puts 12 points on top of the BKT overall point standings here and picks up his ninth racing win of the season. Rummel, Kohler, Disharoon, and Musauer round out the top five. So next in Salt Lake City was the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and drivers could attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheel or opt to do a donut, and each driver was judged on creativity, skill, and execution. With 12 points on the line, here's how they finished. In fifth place was Corey Rummel in Megalodon with a moonwalk. Getting that nose wheelie off of the back of the step up, throwing it into a moonwalk. Look at the way he rides that Megalodon truck up there. Tyler Meninga in fourth in Salt Lake City using his standard teeter-totter move. Getting a little combination for Tyler. Gets the nose wheelie into moonwalk, back into a wheelie. <laughs> back into a moonwalk again. This man can do it all. Third place goes to Jim Kohler, never disappointing oh! with a huge sky wheelie. Nice park job, too. <laughs> yeah, it was. Second, Cody Saussier with the bicycle to moonwalk. Oh, nice technical move, grabbing that rear BKT tire on the edge of that jump, throwing it into a nose wheelie and then a moonwalk. Excellent move. And getting a much needed win here, Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, that signature bicycle, and check it out, intentionally throwing it on the sidewalls. Yeah, man, when you watch this as an athlete, you can just tell Ryan Anderson is so good at what he does. He slows it down turns the front wheel into it, gets the balance of the 12,000 pound truck, throws it on the sidewall and gets the win in skills. His fifth skills win of the season, 12 more points, which puts him in third overall right now on our BKT overall point standing board. Tyler Meninga still on top, Jim Kohler hanging in there in second and Rummel and Saucier ran on out the top five. We still have a long way to go in Utah. More Monster Jam action next. Welcome back to round 22 with Stadium Championship Series Blue in Salt Lake City. And after two competitions, Tyler Meninga has the lead, but not by much as Jim Kohler is just one point behind and having maybe the best night of his season so far this year. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Jim Kohler has been very impressive tonight. And I think one of the things that might be helping him is a little bit of an experience and that bigger motor. He probably has that truck tuned perfectly tonight. Not to mention that Jim Kohler is one of our best drivers and he knows this is the end of the season so he can burn through some parts. And El Toro Loco's Cody Saucier is very much in the conversation here. Just four points back and he had a slow start in Inglewood. What do you expect to see from him after adjusting to the truck after that initial event? You know, in Inglewood, we saw a lot of nerves from Cody Sosier. But, you know, you get on that big stage and you want to perform. For Cody, he's been in arenas all season long, and that is a big adjustment. Cody is an amazing driver, and I think we're starting to kind of see him do that here tonight. Yeah, definitely adjusting to the truck, feeling better in it, making changes. He's currently fifth as we catch you up on the BKT overall point standings, entering freestyle. So Tyler with 21. As we mentioned, Jim just one point back. Ryan Anderson two points back, and he needs to make a big move here in freestyle if he's going to catch up on those points. So here is our freestyle running order, and it's very interesting to see where the cards fall out here. So of the drivers currently in the top five point standings, Adam, who do you feel here has the opportunity to take that overall? I mean, I got to go with Corey Rummel in that second spot. He has an amazing opportunity to give the fans their very first backflip and just get them going from a little bit of a dead zone and two wheel skills. When those fans see freestyle, they get on their feet, they get loud, they get excited, and they put a big score for a big ride. So Corey Rummel, 
big opportunity to get the win in freestyle. And moments ago, Ryan Dishroon kicked off the competition, but blew the motor in shaker with 50 seconds left and his score of 6.693 reflected. And now right in that prime spot that you talked about, here comes Corey Rummel in Megalodon, just two points off the overall event lead. So our former Extreme Air Award winner, and as you said, Adam, a prime spot here. And I think he's really got a lot of momentum as well. So he's had four top fives in the last five events, including a win in Glendale. And so how much does past performance play into current performance and confidence as a driver? Well, that definitely is everything as an athlete. And it's what drives you, you know, to be better and get better is when you see those results getting better throughout the season. And not only that, but we mentioned Glendale. That wasn't that long ago. So he is definitely riding that wave of confidence right now. And don't expect Corey to not be on top at the end of the night. Transition to the pod as he shoots the gap there to get another quick turn in. I mean, I love how these guys have the presence and the visibility on the track to flip it around there and not rub BKT to Ooh. BKT in the corner. Corey coming up very close to being short on that pod. He got a big bounce on those rear BKTs. Nice job. Good truck awareness. He likes that open corner there, giving him an opportunity to really swing it wide and get a lot of momentum for the one two here off the step up. There we go. The back of that step up this weekend's definitely a little steeper. So great job by Corey taking a look at that. Oh, and how about this? Going for the backflip a little bit early. Nice transition. Oh, Can he get oh. the save? He's trying to goose it around. There yeah. we go. Nice job, Corey. Good work by Rubble. Man, he was so patient and just <laughs> let it ride out and knew exactly when to give it the throttle. <laughs> oh, man, that's why we love Monster Jam. You just never know what's going to happen. I thought he was done, and then the Megalodon truck kept rolling, and he made an unbelievable save here in Salt Lake. Yeah, still rocking and rolling out here. Time for one more move on the clock. Let's see if he's going to let her rip. And he's going to park it on the pod. Let's take a look here at our original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. You can see the dirt flying off the bumper. He drags it up the face of that backflip ramp, lets the truck roll over on Megalodon's back, hits the throttle, and makes a huge save. Nice job, Corey. And talk about prime. 9.330 will set the mark. So Corey Rummel just threw it down, but will Megalodon get the win? Find out when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to round 22 of Monster Jam in Salt Lake City. And earlier today, fans flocked to Rice Eccles Stadium for the pit party where they got to meet the drivers and see the trucks up close. And if you want to have some fun before the event, then make sure you attend the pit party at the next Monster Jam in your town. So during the break, a few drivers hit the track for freestyle. And first, it was Joe Foley in Axe, filling the clock, but not getting any wow moments out there. And then Cynthia Gautier gave it a go, but Mechanical Gremlins kept holding her momentum in Lucas Stabilizer, and a score of 6.860 would reflect that. Now it's time for Cody Saucier and El Toro Loco. And remember, he's four points behind Tyler Meninga for the overall event championship out there. And so he's got his work cut out for him. Cody is definitely one of those drivers that can get it done. He's been in arenas all year, but he is definitely a winner, an event championship fighter for sure. Last week in Inglewood, you could tell he was nervous. He was overdriving the truck. He definitely tends to drive the truck very aggressively, so he has to be careful on these big stadium tracks. Yeah, just his second stadium event, brand new truck for him as well. So making sure those shock settings are different. And as you mentioned, in arenas, those shock settings are gonna be very different. So when you drive aggressive, you know, you want to make sure that you're not going to bottom out there. And one of the things about driving aggressive, I think why Cody Saucier is so good at it, in those arenas, 
you have to really get the truck to spin around in a tight area. And to be able to do that, you have to hit the throttle very hard, then slam the brakes on and whip the truck around. And I think that's why you see Cody Saussier coming out of those corners and just nailing the throttle like he did on that step up nice and quick because he's so used to those arena tracks. Yeah, great finesse move there. And I'm loving the momentum here. No shortage of air maneuvers here. He's always trying something different and definitely whipping it around quick as well. About to lose the hood there as he goes for the backflip. Straight into it. He doesn't hesitate at all. Oh, and gets it in reverse. Back to forward. Let's see if he's got one more move. I think he's just trying to right the truck there. And then, of course, you've got the snout of El Toro Loco back up against that windshield, really prohibiting his view out there. Yeah, right now, Cody Sosia can't see anything, but he finally got that truck. Oh, there we go. El Toro Loco, you got to love it. His score an 8.948. And we'll take a look at our original Super Glue, Glue to the Action Replay. Coming into the backflip as if the drivers couldn't see already. He's got the hood in his face, still makes it work, throws it into reverse, then forward. Here comes two-time World Finals freestyle champ, Jim Kohler in Avenger, and he is in that number two spot for the overall event standing. So he's got to take first place away from Corey Rummel, his teammate here, if he wants a shot at it. Nice little rhythmic move using that pod. Jim has just been on fire these last couple rounds, Leslie. And I love that he just removed the front clip there after that park <laughs> job where he almost put it into Gravedigger there in the skills competition. And so he's got great visibility out here, making good use of the step up as well. Yeah, I almost. Ooh, nice save by Jim. Throw it in reverse. Get that thing going quick. But I almost forgot about that huge crash where he flipped right into Gravedigger Tyler Meninga, but yet a veteran move, turning the truck and not hitting him. What an amazing save by Jim. Yeah, freestyle warm up <laughs> and skills. Testing those ramps out for that big air that he's known for out here. Now remember, our score to beat out here, 9.330, set early by Megalodon in the number two spot here in freestyle. So Jim looking to try to do something to best that score and give himself that opportunity for the overall. A lot of smoke coming out of the back of the truck. He's being a little ginger. Looks like he's going to go for the eight pack here. Oh, nice Nicely done. Job. I wasn't sure what the result was going to be. The eight pack has not <laughs> been kind to him this year, and that was perfect. Get on the pod. Nice. We need one more big jump, Jim. There it is. The He's going to not make it. Cases it just a little bit. Let's see if he can get it off the step up. Little step up, step down creep. And a solid effort there for Avenger at 8.759. Jim Kohler, one of the most beautiful eight-pack backflips we've seen all season long, maybe ever. Jim getting a nice freestyle run here in Salt Lake. So out of Orlando, Florida, it's Bari Moosauer in Zombie. First time for him in Salt Lake City. Looks like the rear of that truck was a little bit stiff, bouncing funky on that first jump. I wonder if that's going to affect Bari here. I like the wheelie across the pod. That's something we haven't seen from very many drivers yet this year. Looks like maybe having some issues with his surroundings there, kind of real recognizing where he was at on the track for a second, trying to get it turned quick. Yeah, and you know, Bari, we talked about it all season. He's one of those drivers that maps out his run. And you know, sometimes you make a little bit of a mistake and you get on the wrong side of the track or you're doing something different and the truck bounces weird and you kind of have to turn around and figure out where you're at and what you're going to do next. So that can be one of the disadvantages of that. Yeah, and he's also really been plagued by mechanicals, just kind of tiny things this year that have really kind of set him back. And so he feels like now the truck is solid. He's got all of those kinks worked out and he's ready to rock here towards the end of the season with just a few events left. Really rhythmic so far, lots of good momentum. Oh, there goes an arm. Let's hope it doesn't unbalance him here for this backflip. Gets a nice bounce. Let's see what he's got 
for recovery here after that backflip. He really needs a wow moment. On to the pod. I think something's going on with the rear of that truck. It does not look like to me that that truck is settling for Bari right now. Nice goes, air off the it. race ramp. Oh, there we go, there we go. Great control and braking by Moosauer to save it. And we'll take another look at it. Here he comes into the backflip. Doesn't hit the throttle quite enough, under rotates, but gets a favorable bounce on those front BKTs and lands the backflip. So we're halfway through the final competition of the night and who will come out on top? Find out when Freestyle continues next. Welcome back to Rice Eccles Stadium here in Salt Lake City, Utah. We are in Freestyle and we'll continue here with Loose Cannon Racing's John Gordon. John Gordon coming out firing, grabs the edge of that jump on the pod. A little bit sketchy right there, but nice save to start out his run. I think sketchy is a nice way to announce your presence. So. <laughs> so John coming back to Salt Lake City for the second year in a row, looking for a little redemption here, not the uh, freestyle finish that he was hoping for one year ago. So what happens to you, Adam, as a competitor when you've got a place that maybe you didn't show out like you wanted to the year before and you come back? How does that make you feel as a driver? I mean, it definitely makes you feel demoralized, but one of the nice things about that is usually you know what you did wrong the year before. So at least you're able to kind of make those adjustments and make those changes. It could be, you know, suspension changes. It could have been, you know, not feeling that great where you slept. It doesn't matter. Everything affects what's going on in that truck or on the dirt bike. So just being comfortable and making the correct changes for that event. All right, here we go. Going for a different backflip here. Oh, he skies him up in the air. Can he save it though? All right. John Gordon with a huge backflip off the eight pack. And I think that that will uh, be the show out that you need as a little bit of a redemption. I didn't think as it skied up in the air, he was gonna be able to save it back around, but still rolling four BKTs, still pumped up and rocking and rolling out here on that track. I was dead quiet when he hit that backflip because I saw that truck go straight up in the air. There was no rotation. I cannot believe John Gordon just pulled that off. A phenomenal run there for Gordon as we'll take another look at it. John Gordon, like we talked about this eight pack backflip, does not get the rotation, goes straight up in the air with a huge sky wheelie and manages to get the truck back on all four BKTs. Out of Houston, Texas, here comes Colt Stevens in Thunder Auras. Looks like the top of that truck's falling off, Leslie. When you talk to the drivers, it's funny too, because you see the parts flying off the truck and the body flying off the truck. Some of them actually like when the body comes off because you can see a little bit better. Yeah, unfortunately that roof not gonna help him out too much, but a little bit there with his visibility. I like how deep these guys are turning in the corner. It just gives him so much more power to hit that ramp to the pod. On and off the pod, great navigation of this track by Colt Stevens. Shooting the gap, twirling it back around. The one-two punch. Ooh, coming up a little short. Can he save it? Nice control there by Stevens as he'll continue on here. Another deep turn. It looks like he's also struggling with some steering on this truck as well, not working out for him the way that he wants it to. As he's going to have to back up to get lined up towards that backflip ramp. Well, that backup pays off here for him. Perfect backflip. Let's see what he's got. Oh, a huge air onto the pod for Cole. Riding two wheels across. Going to rock crawl there just a little bit to the finish. The throttle pop lets you know that he's done it. How about at a 9.086? That's the biggest score we've seen for a while. Colt Steven throws it into reverse to get the extra lineup, and it pays off. Great rotation, and then throws a one-two for that huge air onto the pod with a nice save from Colt. And good enough for second. 
So our next competitor is the current overall event and series points leader, Tyler Menega in Gravedigger. And remember, he's trying to clinch the series championship. And so earlier, we spoke with him about where his focus lies as we get closer to world finals. If I'm able to clinch a series championship, I, I don't think my focus will turn towards world finals just yet. We still have, you know, quite a few events left on this, uh, this tour, uh, Stadium Tour Blue. I have uh, Salinas, California before world finals as well. So I'll definitely just be focusing on day to day event by event and trying to make the best out of it that I can. And I feel that's really spoken like a guy who's in the lead trying to clinch that very <laughs> first championship for himself. Yeah, absolutely. You know the pressure's off for Tyler. Great nose wheelie onto the pod. He's been able to incorporate those two wheel skills flawlessly into freestyle and still keep his momentum up. That's a thing that a lot of drivers are still trying to master, like that awesome bicycle. Oh, one way, then the other. Talk about control. You know, and one of the things that I'm looking at on Tyler's truck is that every time he lands, he gets all four BKTs to land at the same time, and it makes the truck land very even. And that's not all Tyler, that's suspension setup as well. We were talking about Barry's truck a little bit earlier, getting those bad bounces on the rear. Man, they have this Grave Digger truck set up perfect. A little puff of smoke there out of the left side of Digger. Oh! You got a tie rod, it looks like, right away. So the score will post here in 8.994. Good enough for third place as we'll take a look at our original super glue glued to the action replay. Tyler Meninga off the race ramp, gets a nice bounce one side and then the other great balance on those BKTs. Comes up to the backflip, but just under rotates, lands on the front too hard and breaks that tie rod. So here's a look at our current freestyle leaderboard. Corey Rummel on top, followed by Colt Stevens, then Meninga, but still two players left to go here that have a real shot at it. So Corey Rummel is now in the driver's seat for the event championship, but Ryan Anderson could still take it all. Son of a Digger is next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to round 22 in Salt Lake City. And before we get back to the action, let's take one more look at the BKT overall point standings coming in to freestyle. You can see Meninga on top there with 21, followed by Kohler, Anderson, Rummel, and Socie rounding out your top five. It's still a battle. Next out to the track, it's the three-time World Finals champion, Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. He's in the hunt for the event championship as well as the series title. And earlier today, we asked him about his chase for the championship. With the season coming to an end, Tyler does have a little bit of a good lead on me right now. I can catch him, but at the same time, it's one of those double-edged swords for me because Tyler would have to do really bad and I'd have to do really good. And it's a tough one for me. I, I would love to make it three in a row. I'd love to see my best buddy Tyler win one too, but I think most importantly is I want to make sure both those digger trucks are going absolutely insane and killing it in every competition. And he has been throwing it down, but he has had some late season gremlins that happen in Arlington and Glendale. And so he's trying to avoid those in these last few events if he's going to make a run for it. You know, and for Ryan, it's just one of those things where he is put into a corner now. He has no option. We talked about it earlier in the show. This is do or die right now. So everything has to be perfect on that truck. And we know in Monster Jam that unfortunately those truck breakages happen. If Ryan does win this championship, it's not going to be a miracle, but it's going to be just short of it. Yeah, and Tyler's only had two DNFs this season. So to rely on some breakage from him, it's really not possible. It's not going to happen. It's not plausible. Oh, look at that. Nice little backflip there. Recovery as he tiptoes it down, keeps rolling. Now, remember, he's really got to take the lead here. And that score to beat a 9.330. So he's going to have to get wild. Yeah, and as an athlete, when you get put in these situations, all you can do is what Ryan Anderson is doing right now, getting big air. Look at that bicycle in onto the sidewall. All you can do as an athlete is do your best and try to go out on top. And that's the wow moment he needed. Let's see if it pays off as we take a look at our original super glue glued to the action replay. A nice air off the back of the step up, uses that bounce to his advantage, throws it into a bicycle and almost catching a cyclone. 
So the score will be a 9.461, so he did exactly what he needed to do. But our final driver tonight, Chris Kohler in Monster Mud, is also last round's freestyle winner. And so he might be able to put a little bit more icing on top here and take that away from Anderson. I love it. I'm going to be chanting rookie of the year every <laughs> single time I see this kid. He deserves it. He's been on fire all season long. Monster Mutt and Chris Kohler definitely one to watch each and every weekend at Stadium Championship Series Blue. And I think it's been awesome to see how quickly he's adjusted from his little bit of arena experience to the stadium, to the big stage, because as you mentioned earlier with Cody, it's a completely different driving style. And uh, I think it's in the genes, though, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> it is definitely in the genes. And another thing that he has on his side is Jim has so much experience with Monster Jam trucks, with how to drive them, how to set them up. And you have just seen the truck look tight at the beginning of the series. He looked a little tight. Everything's just loosened up, and he is gelling here in Salt Lake City. I love the way he sends it there off the pod. Comes down just a little short and doubles it up. Line it up here for the backflip. Little crooked. Oh, can he get the rotation one more time? Mm. And it looks like he's going to get shut off there. No chance for recovery, but still an 8.879 for Kohler. Came into the backflip ramp just a little crooked. Got a tiny bit of a corkscrew, under-rotated it as well. Couldn't hit the throttle because those front BKTs weren't on the ground and unfortunately comes up a little short. So here's a look at our final freestyle leaderboard and Ryan Anderson gets his fifth freestyle win of the season here. Just huge for him in the scope of his overall quest to try to overtake Meninga for that series points championship with just two events to go. So 12 more points on the board with the win. And here are our final BKT overall point standings. Anderson on top, then Rummel, Meninga, Kohler, and Saucier. So for Ryan, his sixth event championship of the season. So let's hear it from our winner. I didn't do great in racing. Honestly, I made a bad decision in lane choice. My fault. Didn't really realize the one turn was deteriorating. But hey, it's all right because skills, I smoked it, man. Got an awesome cyclone, two-wheeled all over this place. It was great. And in freestyle, man, we turned it loose. We went wild. I was jumping all over the place, backflip, went crazy. Man, it was awesome. The Salt Lake fans were amazing for my first time here. And I guarantee you, I'll be back. So I gained a few points on Tyler this weekend. I can't say it's enough to be in a really good shot to get it unless Tyler has major problems. But one thing I love about it is it's going to definitely put that pressure on Tyler. Man, he's, he's looking pretty good to win his first ever big stadium championship series. So I'd love to see that happen for him. I always love when Grave Digger wins, but at the same time, I'm not going to give it to him easy. For Adam Entiknap, I'm Leslie Mears. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you right here next time on Monster Jam.